Okay, we've just discovered a star travelling in a circular orbit around our galaxy. Um, we want to deduce the mass of our galaxy from this. So, let's start with a diagram. We have a galaxy, sort of spiral pattern, and we have a star. And it's some distance d out, which is 80 kiloparsecs. And it's moving at a fairly considerable speed of 320, call it v equals 320 kilometers per second. Now what principle can we use here? Um, energy isn't really changing, it's staying at the same distance at the same speed, so energy is not too useful. This looks like a force momentum type problem. In particular, as the star is moving in a circle, there has to be a force towards the center. And that force has to be just enough to keep it moving in a circle. So we know that the force necessary to keep something moving in a circle is equal to m, that's the mass of the star, v squared over, in this case, I've written it as d. But what is supplying the force? Well, in this case, you're in a vacuum, there's no friction, there's no giant bits of elastic joining the star to the galaxy, so your only real option is gravity. The force due to gravity is given by Newton's law of gravity, which is g mass of the galaxy, big M, mass of the star, small m, over d squared. So if it's to stay in a circular orbit, this must equal that. So set the gravitational force equal to the force necessary to keep the object moving in a circle, and solve. What do we want to find? We want to find the mass of the galaxy, big M. Now notice we can cancel the small m's, the mass of the star does not matter. And let's rearrange, so multiply both sides by d squared. D on the top here, and divide both sides by g. So we know that the mass of the galaxy must be v squared d over g. Now we need to put numbers in. Remember to convert all the units. So the velocity is 320 kilometers per second, so multiply by 1,000. The uh, radius is 80,000 kiloparsecs. Uh, so 80, 80 kiloparsecs, 80,000 parsecs, so multiply by the length of a parsec, 3.1 by 10 to the 16 metres. And it turns out that comes to 3.8 by 10 to the 42 kilograms. Now if we go back to the question, we see that that's... Um, Big, but reasonably plausible. Uh, over here you can see that the uh, mass of everything we can see in the galaxy is 1.2 by 10 to the 42. So the 10 to the 42 is the same, but this is 3.8, so it's more. So there must be more to our galaxy than we can actually see. And indeed this is what you actually do find. This is the evidence for dark matter in the universe, the missing matter. You find that things in the outskirts of galaxies move too fast, and therefore you can infer that there must be more mass in the galaxy than we can see. So we found that dark matter exists. Check for plausibility. I mean, this number is at least the right order of magnitude. If it was 10 to the 30 or 10 to the 50, it would be silly. But 10 to the 42 is about right. How about this equation over here? Is that looking plausible? Um, if the star is going faster, then it would need more mass to keep it in. So that makes sense. If the star was further out, it would need more mass to keep in. If gravity was more, then you'd need less mass to keep it in. So that makes sensible. If we check units, so we've got 
meter squared over second squared. Distance is meters. And g is a bit complicated. Um, so what are the dimensions of g? Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to work it out. So let's find an equation which involves g, which I know is true. Let's try force equals g m m over r squared. So we can rearrange that, have g equals force r squared over m m. But force is hard as well. So force is mass times acceleration. So we've got mass times acceleration times r squared over two masses. Now let's try putting in units. So we've got kilogram meters second squared meters squared and a kilogram and a kilogram. So out gives us meters cubed over seconds squared kilogram. Okay, let's go back to our original equation. Mass equals V squared R over G. So V has got units meters over seconds squared. R has units meters and that G on the bottom has got meters cubed second squared kilogram. Oh, that's a meters squared there. So we've got meters cubed, meters cubed, second squared, second squared equals kilograms. So the dimensions check. In the real world, I probably would not have bothered checking the dimensions in this case because it was sufficiently slow and painful. You might as well do the whole calculation again. However, the functional form check and the numerical answer plausibility checks are definitely worth doing in that situation. So it all looks like it works out and we have found dark matter.